So if you are looking for fame to define you, then you will never be happy and you will always be searching for happiness and it, you will never find it in fame. We are told that if we're beautiful, if we're skinny, if we're successful, famous, if we fit in, um, if everyone loves us, that we'll be happy. You can never get enough of that. I realize that it's like, it doesn't stop. It keeps calling you. It's like a drug. It's a hamster wheel. It's a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you're never satisfied. You see, happiness, happiness demands a certain outcome. And I say, if happiness is what you're after, then you're going to be let down frequently and you're going to be unhappy much of your time. How would you really enjoy spending your life? Be happy, be peaceful. Happiness. Everybody talks about it, but what is it actually? Well, scientists define this concept in a simple way. It's about how many positive emotions you feel, how many negative emotions you feel, and how much you're satisfied with your life overall. So what do you think? Are you happy? Are you happy? I want to be happy, but now I'm not. But I try. So I just tell that you need to feel free and do what you want. Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. I am. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it's a very difficult question because I can say yes, but with uh, the things that happens these days, uh, I can't say I'm happy. Right now, I think I'm close to happy, I would say. <laughs> I'm trying, but not yet. Now, the question is, how can we be happier? A lot of people are trying to be happy, but only a few people seem to actually be happy. And some people come to the conclusion that they're simply not meant to be happy. And to be honest, that's partly true. Research has shown that 50% of our happiness is determined by our genetics. 50% we have no control over. Then there is 10% that is determined by our circumstances in life, such as our job, our financial situation, the country we're living in, or the people around us. And the last 40% of our happiness is determined by our so-called intentional activities which are our thoughts and behaviors we generate throughout the day. So how we engage with others and ourselves and how we think about life. We will talk more about that later. So calculating our circumstances and intentional activities together, there's 50% of our happiness that we have a decent amount of control over. That means that we are actually capable to make ourselves happier and therefore it's worth digging deeper into the secrets of happiness. Chapter 1. Circumstances I had my first breakthrough when I was 21. It was the first time in my life that I actually felt like I achieved it all. I, I was studying psychology at university, it was my dream, I had brilliant grades. I was just accepted to do my semester abroad in South Korea, dream of mine. I was starting my company, which was promising. I gave my first seminar about building habits. I had a beautiful girlfriend, had beautiful friends, felt financially secure. I had it all and I wrote my goals actually down. I achieved them all. And it was a summer. I was walking into my kitchen and it was the first time I was actually kind of like relaxed. I was looking at the kitchen. I was just asking myself, what am I doing today? 
I wrapped up all those projects, I'm doing amazing, I'm 21, this is life. And I was the first time really present looking at my kitchen. I was like, wow, this is a beautiful kitchen. I never really looked at it. Always so busy cooking, but then quickly going into my room, keep working. And I was standing there looking at the kitchen table, where the sun shines on there. And suddenly I was, I was shocked, it hit me. I was bummed that I noticed I had it all. I could not ask for anything else, but I'm not a 10 out of 10 happy. I was that, I was like a seven out of 10. So I was not depressed, it was not crazy, but I was just bummed because I literally felt like I could not ask for anything else in life, but I'm not fully happy. We often overly focus on achieving certain external goals so we can finally be happy. And it seems like we don't get the message. Instead, we are constantly playing this if-then game. If we finish university and finally got our degree. If we find the perfect girlfriend or boyfriend. If we finally make good money and finish our to-do list, then we can be happy. We tend to confuse being happy with being finished. And that's a hamster wheel. As soon as we achieve our goals and arrive in our new circumstances, we raise our standards. Only from the inside, the hamster wheel looks like a ladder. And you try to climb the ladder faster and faster until you finally realize that achieving all those goals is not the ultimate key to happiness. People were wondering, like, you know, like, well, how could you be sad when all of this opportunities come to you? The fact that you're overstimulated, it's like you have so much of this, these, these things, but they, they really don't equal out to emotional support. I had bought into the not uncommon notion that when I taste success, when I get over there, then I'll be happy. But the strangest thing happened. As the show got more successful, I got more depressed. And I know tons of people who I grew up with in the Silicon Valley boom who have hundreds of millions of dollars in their bank account and are as miserable and as lonely and as broken as you'll ever see. But I feel like the way that I have money kind of took away a lot of my happiness. And then when those things came, the, the happiness wasn't there. And I, I realized you lose sight of the people and the blessings that you have around you. Well, why do you care so much about success? Have you figured that out? I'm just addicted to it. I just, why? I think that I've sacrificed so much that um, I have to push it as far as I possibly can. Now, do you think you've beaten it? No, Larry. It's always there. <laughs> you beaten it. Yeah, I kicked it. <laughs> no, I'm I mean fine. I have literally wanted to and attempted to take my own life. I, I wanted to not be here anymore. And I have millions of followers and I have all the streams. I got whatever. It doesn't solve your problems. Like it does not make things go away. Now, to put all of that into perspective, money does not buy you happiness, but lack of money certainly buys you misery. And that's the same with beauty, success, our living situation and any other life circumstances. So it's necessary to a certain degree, but it's by far not sufficient to live a happy life. Again, circumstances are 10% of your happiness. Chapter 2. Intentional activities. Now. After coming to the realization that our circumstances alone are not sufficient to be fulfilled in life, you take a step back and reflect. And optimally, you start to shift your priorities towards your intentional activities. Your intentional activities are basically your inner circumstances. So you're changing the way you think and therefore also the way you behave on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that sounds still a little bit fuzzy, so let me share four examples of intentional activities that are proven to make you happier today. Growth. See, the major question to ask on the job is not what are you getting? The major question to ask on the job is what are you becoming? 
See, the big question is not what am I getting paid here. The big question is what am I becoming here? Because true happiness is not contained in what you get. Happiness is contained in what you become. So keep growing yourself. Learn something, master something that feels authentic. It needs to be something that you think is meaningful for yourself, but also for others. And studying law because your parents want you to, that's not meaningful and that's not authentic. And if you don't really know what it is, what is your life purpose, what is the real thing you want to grow into, that's fine. You just need to feel like you accepted the challenge. You actually accepted the adventure and you're on the adventure of learning about yourself, tackling the challenges and growing into something that feels authentic. Mindfulness. Mindfulness is the ability to be fully present, which helps you to cultivate a peace of mind, optimism, and gratitude. The biggest game changer for me was meditation. I do this now for four or five years. The first year was tough to actually keep it up on a day-to-day -day basis. I actually didn't manage um, because it's hard, first of all, but secondly, I didn't yet fully understand the importance and impact that meditation can have and then it got better but still i really realized even if i have bad days even though if i don't feel like it you have to keep it up and you have to try to keep the quality of the, the meditation up and really do the work and yeah it it makes me much more grounded i have a much easier time not focusing on negative things just seeing things as they are be grateful be even optimistic about life and yeah, I really understood that to be happy, I don't really need to achieve any outer circumstances. I just need to be present. I just need to breathe. I just need to be happy and not do happiness. So that was a game changer for me. And it could be a different one for everyone else. See, meditation is just one tool to be mindful, but you also could just go into nature, go for a walk, do yoga, be deliberately grateful about your life. There are different things to be more mindful and be in the present moment. And the question is just what it is for you. What do you want to give it a try? How do you want to be more mindful? Relationships. You might think, wait, is that not about circumstances? And that's to a degree true, but most important here are your thoughts and your actions you put into relationships. It's not about the fact that you have people around you, it's about how you decide to interact with those people. So actually working with people together, cooperating, interacting, caring about others, truly caring about them, being kind, engaging in acts of kindness to your friends, family members, but also strangers. If you embody this positive and generous attitude in life and towards others as well, you automatically drag even more loving people into your life. Relationships are not about quantity, but about quality. It's not about gathering friends, but to spend high quality time with the right people, engaging in deep conversations and feeling connected to them. Health. I'm not talking about being healthy because that would be a circumstance which we adapt to quickly, studies have shown that. But it's about feeling healthy. And how do you feel healthy? By engaging in health activities. The catchphrase is, emotion comes through motion. So make sure that you build a habit to move. And it really doesn't matter what kind of movement we're talking, whether it's yoga, swimming, running, playing tennis, it doesn't matter. Also, eating healthy, sleeping well, and being around nature can make you feel less stressed and more happy. Chapter three, conclusion. What I'm trying to say is that you are a plant and you just need the right amount of water, soil, sun to make sure that you're growing and you're becoming happy. And for you, that means focusing on your personal and authentic growth, your mindfulness, your relationships, your health activities, and you don't want to directly focus on 
being happy. If you always just focus and make this your goal to be more happy, to check where am I at, what is missing, studies have shown you actually become less happy. So just focus on nurturing those intentional activities. That's one of the biggest keys to become more happy. And as a result, you naturally become this beautiful and fulfilled tree. Now, you still might think, where's happiness now coming from, outside, inside? Well, it's both. It's 10% circumstances, yes, but it's 40% intentional activities. And 50% still is your genetics. And that also maybe helps you to become a little bit more compassionate with yourself. It's not the goal to be 10 out of 10 happy every day. It's not even possible because 50% is not in our control. But you can ensure that every day is a meaningful day and that you focus on uh, the things you have power over. Now, if that all made a little bit of sense, but you're still saying it was a nice documentary, but what am I doing now? How am I raising my emotional level? How am I growing? How am I becoming self-actualized and grow as a human being psychologically? What we could then do if you want to. Um, there's a link in the description below. You can sign up for a call with me, a personal call, and there we can really just check and talk. Where are you at? What are you trying to improve in life? Where do you want to get? Can I help you? And are we fit from both sides? And if we notice this might work out, I might be able to help you, then we can talk about working together and hopping on a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. This is my core business, helping people one-on-one. -on -one. Videos are great, you get great insights. I had so many insights from books and videos, but at some point, one-on-one -on -one coaching is the way to go if you really want to go fast, want to go very personal and very intensely. And with that being said, I also just simply wish you a beautiful day and also especially a meaningful day. Why do you want to do anything you do? It should not be motivated by something that you think is going to make fulfillment comes from within you by being authentic to yourself, not ch chasing fame. But the most important journey I think all of us will go through is the journey in ourselves to find our truth, to find who we are and what makes us happy. But if you place your importance on this, which is like appreciation, appreciation, love, you know, it's like that, that is, that is enough. Mm. So what did I do? I started to say, no, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do that. I'm not taking that picture. I'm not going to that event. I'm not standing by that because that's not what I stand for. And slowly but surely, I remembered who I am. Are you a rich man? When you mean rich, what do you mean? You have a lot of possessions, a lot of money in the bank. Possession make you rich? I don't, I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life. So inner peace is the ultimate source of happiness, joyfulness. So I think people do not understand that. Life is about balance, right? You have to have some type of balance. You have like time for work and it's time for play. And if you don't allow these two things to coexist, you have an imbalance. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear.